precise floats, very often it's because you're hitting under the ball and lifting it. Now if you're hitting your slice and it's floating, it becomes a very easy shot for the opponent to start to either dictate play with or put away and finish. So we want to avoid hitting slices that float. Now there are three main swings when it comes to the slice. There is the high to low swing. There is the high to medium swing. And then there's a medium to high swing. Now the medium to high swing is where you actually lift up those low balls, you're picking it up. And you want your slice to float somewhat because you have to clear the net. But we want to avoid using the swing when the ball is slightly higher, around waist height or shoulder height. On these types of balls, we should be aiming to try to cut down the back of the ball to keep that slice from floating, to be more aggressive, to make it much harder for the opponent to deal with. Now, in order to achieve this high to low swing, we have to make sure that we're starting above the point of contact with the racket head. So if I'm making contact at shoulder level, I can't start with my racket down here because then the swing will be more of a linear one and I'll be pushing or guiding that slice. I have to ensure that the racket head is higher than that point of contact so that I'm able to cut down the back of the ball. And this is what we see Federer doing so well. He has the racket head above his left shoulder and he's in this kind of L shape with the racket head and the arm. And from here he's cutting down the back of the ball and he's finishing across the body. That pendulum effect from here to here. He's finishing across the body with that non-hitting hand going back and down to help him counterbalance what the right hand is doing. Notice also the bottom of the racket pointing towards that ball, creating leverage or force over that ball. This is a great clip to see Federer finishing with his racket on the right side of his body instead of extending towards the target, which is that more traditional slice. So again, we see the racket going across his body and this will allow you to really cut down the back of that ball and produce more underspin on your slice. So the first step in achieving that slice that doesn't float is to make sure that you start with your racket head higher than your left shoulder, make sure that we have this L shape in the racket and the arm, and make sure that you're using that non-hitting hand, your left hand, to hold the throat of the racket. So from this position, I'm now able to actually cut down on that ball and produce more of an aggressive and more powerful slice. Now from this position, it's important that we start that downward swing path. So it ends up becoming a swing like this. We're going from the top to down and forward. Now we can also help our body achieve more power by leaning into that ball with our right shoulder. So as I'm making contact, my right shoulder leans into the ball. Almost I'm imagining that my right shoulder is hitting that ball. Once I'm in that position, it becomes a very easy slice for me to produce power because I have the space to actually accelerate. Now from here, the bottom of the racket will actually lead the way almost as if I'm having that forehand lag when I hit my forehand. So as the racket lag is coming down, I'm still maintaining this L shape in the arm and the racket head. This will give me that stability at the point of contact. So we want to avoid doing that chop where you end up having your racket and your arm in an I shape. So it's always staying in that L shape. I make contact out in front of my body. And then as I make contact, I still carry on that swing of going from the left side of my body to the right side. Now, the faster we can do this, the more power can be produced. 
If I can maintain this slight bend in the elbow, it makes it much easier. Once you straighten out the arm, it becomes a very stiff shot and it becomes harder to actually pull across the body. So by having a slight bend, I'm able to then have this pendulum effect happen much easier. So it's high to low. And once you can master this pose, this finish, where the left arm goes back and down to counterbalance what's happening with the rack ahead, it will be very easy for you to control those slices. Now, if you've enjoyed this lesson, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, of course, and turn on the notification bell. If there are any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave a comment down below. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT, all the best and see you soon.